following voices are AI generated. We hope you enjoy the video. Okay guys, let's settle in for a classic. Today, we're reviewing the live action Disney film from 1997, George of the Jungle. To keep up with the legacy of the Premi Dao Remy Sonic AI videos, my current slash meta era counterpart, and Dreamcast slash adventure era counterpart, will join me, Amy and Shadow, in this video. Oh, I love the movie! It's so silly and fun! We've been wanting to review this movie since the summer, but because of Adventure Era Sonic and Amy having their babies, and because of our busy schedule, we delayed this review. Better late than never, as they say. I heard it's got a lot of monkeys and that the creator of the channel saw this movie along with Chicken Run two decades ago when he started kindergarten. So we're basically reviewing his childhood movies on his behalf. Monkeys? Really? They're actually apes, specifically gorillas since monkeys have tails. Last time I checked, gorillas don't have tails at all. George of the Jungle is an alright movie, but it's a masterpiece compared to its god-awful direct-to-video sequel. Calm down, Mr. Grump. I bet you've been stressing out over taking care of your six kids. Don't let out your cranks in this video. I really needed the break from being a dad. I barely slept since mid-September, so basically a month. My Amy is even more grouchy than me. That's why she's not in this video. Before we review the movie, the actor who played George, Brendan Fraser, won an Academy Award for Best Actor in his amazing comeback movie, The Whale. He wasn't relevant since the 2000s. This movie, along with The Mummy and Encino Man, are some of his most iconic films. Absolutely! Brendan Fraser is one of the most underrated actors. It's too bad he's had personal struggles over the years, and The Whale was a tearjerker of a comeback movie. As for George of the Jungle, it's definitely one of the best live-action movies based on a cartoon. The original George of the Jungle cartoon was made by the same guys who made Rocky and Bullwinkle, Jay Ward and Bill Scott, but it was a short-lived series. But I'm sure it was still popular enough to get a movie and that it's a Tarzan parody. Ironically, Disney themselves made the animated Tarzan movie just two years after this movie. While everyone else had seen the movie when it was new, I'm the only Sonic who saw the movie recently, and it was hilarious. In fact, the rest of the current Slash Meta crew laughed at every scene. Let's watch the movie again and give the fans our thoughts and refresh our memories of the film. One hour and 30 minutes later. Wow, that CGI is... Ha, well, it's definitely a product of its time. Better than most dated 90s technology, but not as much as Jurassic Park. But it's so charming, Dreamcast slash Adventure Sonic. George was so sweet yet funny. Who knew the main talking ape sounded British and intelligent compared to the other apes? Hey, I've seen weirder things in my day. Yeah, it's a charming relic of the past. And I for one would recommend it to anyone who loves guilty pleasures and cheesy family flicks from the past. Ursula was hilarious. I love her sassy attitude and wise-ass remarks. For an heiress from San Francisco, she sure has a sense of humor just like George. Yeah, she's a great contrast to George's innocent nature. She eventually became a lot more of a lover of the jungle when she started swinging vines, but she was still scared of the gorillas. I actually love the message about friendship and acceptance. Even though it's a Tarzan parody, it surprisingly captures the best spirit of the other ape man with a few tree-crashing shenanigans thrown in. The music was catchy and the landmarks are stunning. The ape mountain looks silly yet elegant. Only Disney can pull off fancy and goofy backdrops. It's certainly something. Now let's discuss the plot. It starts with an animated intro recreating the original cartoon from the 60s with a funny narrator explaining the origin of George when he was a baby. So a plane got crashed and baby George went missing and decided to stay in the jungle. And we have the classic theme song of George of the Jungle. The animation then changed to live action and the man has grown up. We then meet Ursula with a tour guide named Kwame and the porters. While Ursula was videotaping her visit to the jungle, she encounters her spoiled fiancé Lyle Van de Groot, who wishes to take her home and had hired two poachers, Max and Thor, to track her down. Later one night, Kwame tells the group a story about the White Ape, a local legend of a superhuman primate that lives on Ape Mountain and rules the jungle. The next day, Ursula refuses to go home until she sees an ape, so Lyle went with her into the jungle to find them. The two encountered a lion, and Lyle knocked himself unconscious, trying to flee like an idiot. 
Ursula was saved by the white ape, who turns out to be George. I guess a white ape is a race joke. Then another lion showed up trying to unalive Ursula. Poor George saved her again by grabbing her while swinging a vine. True George fashion. They hit the tree, and Ursula herself fell unconscious. After taking Ursula to his wonderful treehouse home and caring for her, George introduced her to his three animal friends. Ape, voiced by John Cleese, the sapient talking gorilla who raised him, Shep, his pet African forest elephant that acts like a dog, and Tukey, a toko toucan who gives him news involving the jungle's animals. George was smitten with Ursula and attempted to woo her. Ursula soon reciprocated his attraction, and her time spent with George made her more fond of him like how my Amy gradually made me return my feelings for her. Lyle, Max, and Thor soon arrive at the treehouse, but Ursula treats Lyle coldly for trying to abandon her during the lion attack. Max and Thor try to shoot Shep for his ivory, and Ape shouts at Shep to run. Everyone is stunned by the sight of the talking ape, and Max and Thor decide to tranquilize and capture him. George runs to stop them and is accidentally shot by Lyle, who thought the gun was his novelty lighter that he had planned to scare George off with. Lyle was then imprisoned after being ratted out as the shooter by the porters. Max and Thor were deported, but decided to return to the treehouse to capture Ape and make a fortune off of him in Las Vegas. Meanwhile, Ursula took George with her to San Francisco to get medical help for his gunshot wound and showed him the human world, which he had not seen since he was a baby. The narrator once again was stealing the show, acknowledging that George couldn't be gone since he's the hero. Anyway, while Ursula was at work, George explored San Francisco on his own. He ate coffee like Shadow, bought McDonald's, worked out, and used his vine swinging skills to rescue a man whose paraglider had become caught on the suspension cables of the Bay Bridge. Ursula admitted what happened in Africa to her parents and intended to break off the wedding, but her overbearing mother Beatrice objected. At a party designed to celebrate Ursula's engagement, that bitch Beatrice took George aside and coldly told him that Ursula's marriage to Lyle must proceed as planned and threatened to harm George if he interfered. If there's one thing I hate more than being replaced in the Sonic games is dealing with a nasty old woman like Beatrice. Thank God my mother-in-law isn't a dried up bag like Beatrice. Back in the jungle, Max and Thor tranquilized Ape. Before he fell unconscious and got captured, Ape managed to send Tookie to find George. Tookie flew to San Francisco and informed George of Ape's capture, forcing George to leave Ursula and return to back to the Bukuvu. While she was confused by George's unexplained goodbye, Ursula realized that she loved George and went to find him, despite her mom's protests. Max and Thor returned to the treehouse after getting turned around by a phony shortcut trail and were confronted by George. He fought them with help from Ursula and the animals and defeated them, saving Ape. Lyle then appears, having escaped prison, and became a legally ordained minister able to perform marriage ceremonies. Basically, he's the priest and the groom. Lyle had George subdued by a group of hired mercenaries and forcibly took Ursula to a boat waiting on Ape River to perform their marriage rites. Ursula tried to escape by humorously kicking Lyle's foot, but was stopped. However, the ceremony was interrupted by a series of harsh rapids that put them both in danger. George was rescued from the mercenaries with help from Shep and the gorillas, spoofing the teenage mutant ninja turtles. But as gorillas, it was even implied that Shep peed on Max, Thor, and the mercenaries. Gross. After encountering a snake, George swung in to reach Ursula and Lyle. He crashed painfully into a massive tree due to him claiming it to be the biggest swing in jungle history. As the tree fell over the river, George managed to pull Ursula to safety while the rapids led Lyle into a dark cave. Lyle thought Ursula was still in the boat with him and proclaimed their wedding vows, but to his horror, he discovered that he had just married himself to a gorilla who kissed him. Again, disgusting. I'm getting flashbacks from a certain human princess from a certain game we were in. Don't even think about saying her name, Sonic! George and Ursula declared their love for each other and kissed. 
According to the narrator, it was George's first kiss that wasn't given to an ape or an elephant. After the kiss, George and Ursula got married and it was sweet. When they were married, the people of both San Francisco and Africa, as well as the jungle's animals, were in attendance. As time passed by, the jungle couple lived in their own treehouse and raised a son, George Jr., whom they presented to the animals from atop a parody of Pride Rock. So this is not only a Tarzan parody, but a Lion King parody too. Now to think of it, it reminds me of presenting my six children to everyone after they were born. Maybe in a future video, we can give the fans an update on the baby hedgehogs, but as a final farewell to the movie, a mid credit scene showed that Ape moved to Las Vegas and became a famous singer, with a humiliated Max and Thor forced to be part of his performance. He did a cover of the classic Frank Sinatra song, My Way. That's right. Even in 1997, extra scenes were shown during the credits. Just not as frequently as with most franchise movies nowadays. And that was George of the Jungle, another classic 90s movie that a lot of people love. Sure, it has goofy moments. Just like with the Little Rascals and the two Stuart Little movies, it's not the greatest, but it's still a fun flick. I don't care what people think. This movie is an all-time greatest hit in live-action Disney movies. A goofy Tarzan wannabe in a leopard-printed loincloth may sound like a bad movie, but... You know what they say, never judge a book by its cover. Again? This movie was way past better than expected. To think it would be dated, but as I was looking up the movie, I got unfortunate bad news. It got a shitty sequel. It was direct to video. Jesus Christ, not another awful sequel. I've noticed a pattern. Every time we review a good movie, there's always an inferior follow-up. No pun intended, but George of the Jungle 2 was apeshit. What's worse is that the sequel came out six years too late, 2003 to be exact, and the only actors that returned were the voice of the narrator Keith Scott, the voice of John Cleese as Ape, and Thomas Hayden Church as Lyle. Everyone else was recast because the budget was awful, and it shows. The CGI was even more dated than the first movie. I absolutely hate the sequel with a fiery passion. Get that trash out of my face! Wow, judging by the hate, I guess I won't watch the second movie. Maybe it's a good thing the first movie ended on a high note instead of a bad one. Definitely! On the bright side, the creator of the channel has a VHS of the movie, and it has that blue tip on the tape like this Reddit post. Back in the early 2000s, certain videotapes, mainly Disney ones, have these blue top parts. Not to mention the first George of the Jungle movie aired on Disney Channel all the time back in the late 90s and early 2000s. By the way, if you're wondering what Knuckles, Rouge, Tails, and the Chaotix opinion of the movie, they all agreed that it's fun to re-watch. To wrap up the video, we're going to delay the remaining movie reviews to November, as there are two party videos coming, a Halloween party and one for all three Shadows since it's their year. Sonic X Shadow Generations just came out. We're going to celebrate the game since it's already got a 9 on IGN. Our franchise is finally thriving again, and I can't wait for our party. Hey there, Land Critters. I heard you guys were reviewing classic movies. Well, if you're looking for a real classic, you should check out my first movie, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie from 2004, like you promised. And don't forget to play the video game. SpongeBob? What are you doing here? I'm everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> of course you are. Unfortunately, we're delaying the reviews to November, so you're going to wait for the movie review and gameplay of your movie game. Don't worry, SpongeBob. It'll be worth the wait as we have to throw our Halloween party and Shadows Generations party as well. The current slash meta era crew will be there at the Shadow party while everyone else will be at the Halloween party and you're invited. We'll check the movie and game out as well, Horus Sea Creature. I heard they were nostalgic and fun. No problem, guys. I can wait like when I had my package for the toy I got from buying so many cereal boxes. That should be it for today, ladies and gents. Thanks for watching. Like we said, the next videos will be our respective parties. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Check out our other videos as well. Don't forget to click on the bell so you won't miss new videos. And spread the word.
follow us on TikTok as well. Stick around and stay tuned for more new videos. Now whose turn it is to say the thing? I might as well say it since I haven't said it on my own in a long time. Peace out and rock on! Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the king of the jungle. Oh!